Greetings to our senior high school learners and to our social science enthusiasts. I am Sir Edward and welcome to another topic for UCSP class with Sir Edward Noda. For today's topic, we will discuss the theoretical perspectives of society and social groups. This would be our last topic for the first term or first quarter or third quarter and this is lesson number 8 for UCSP, Understanding Culture, Society and Politics. Social groups are fundamental parts of human life. There are a multitude of people who see each other often and think of themselves as part of a group. There appears to be groups of people everywhere. We could be a member of a church group, college class, workplace, sports team, club, and others. For our topic for today, we will divide our topic into two subtopics. The first one is that we will discuss the sociological perspectives of society and the second one is that we will discuss further the different social groups. Let's start on the first part of our discussion and that is the sociological perspective of society. It is important for all of us to understand and to analyze these three important theories so that we would be able to understand how society works. The first sociological perspective of society is what we call as structural functionalism. Structural functionalism, or also known as functionalist, believes that society is a constitution with interconnected parts organized to attain the biological and sociological needs of individuals in the society. Herbert Spencer claimed that just like the different organs of our body, the various parts of society work together to keep society functioning. So say for example, Herbert Spencer compared the society to, a human, to the human body, to which our body is composed of different organs. Say for example, our brain, our heart, our liver, our kidney, and those organs which I have mentioned has as important function in our body. Same goes to the different structures or institutions in our government or in our society rather. This structure or these institutions like government, church, school, the market, even the media has its important function that should be observed and follow for the society to continue its process or to continue its function. Remember, the key word for structural functionalism is structure and function, meaning Every structure has its function that needs to observe and that needs to follow. For us to understand more functionalist theory, it is believed that each aspect of society depends on each other. They work hand in hand, they are interconnected to one another, and each contributes to the overall stability and functioning of that society. And this structure consists of different institutions like the government, the economy, education, family, media, and religion. Meaning, all of this structure or all of these institutions work hand in hand for us to continue to prosper and to thrive in our society. Imagine what would happen in our society if the government collapsed. Or what might happen in our society if the sector of education failed to work or failed to continue its function of giving education to the young people. What, what would might happen in our society? To continue for structural functionalism, we have here the view of Emil Durkheim. Emil Durkheim believed that society was composed of interdependent and interconnected parts that were put together to keep instability. For Durkheim, it is held collectively by shared social constructs which serve to regulate social life like laws, morals, values, religious beliefs, customs, fashions, and rituals. Meanwhile, Robert Merton noted that social process had the following function. The first is what we call as the manifest function. Manifest functions are the outcomes of a social process that are considered expected. So, say for example, the manifest function of education is acquiring knowledge, 
and preparing for our career or getting a good job. These are what we call as the expected function of education. Meanwhile, when we see the latent or the latent function of the latent function, these are unintended outcomes of a social process. So, say for example, the the example of a latent function of education includes finding new friends, attending extracurricular activities, or even finding a life partner. Remember, for the latent function, these are the unintended function or the unintended outcome, meaning. As long or as you continue with your schooling, you will meet friends along the way, and these friends could be later on be part of your of your close friend or core group, and later on it could be a part, for example, of your family, di ba? Of your close family or extended family, and these are what we call as the latent function or the unintended outcomes of a social process. Now, say for example, each institution failed to perform its function, then this function will happen. These functions may happen when social processes have undesirable outcomes for the society. In education, examples of these functions are getting failing grades, non-attendance in school or classes, dropping out of school, not graduating on time, and not finding an appropriate occupation. So remember, an institution or any part or structure that failed to to ah to perform its function is what we call as dysfunction. The second ah sociological perspective is what we call as the Marxism or the conflict theory. Marxism sees society as a competition for limited resources. Some organizations and individuals were able to acquire and keep more resources than the others, and that is the sad reality of life. Karl Marx believed that society was composed of individuals in various classes competing for resources like food, clothing, shelter, and employment. Social institutions like education, health, religion, media, and government, in some cases, display this practice of inequalities and unequal social structure between the rich and the poor. And this is, this can be manifest in different realities of our life. So, say for example, the reality of the education between the public school and the private school. Diba? With the sad reality of the incomplete or poor facilities in the public school, it is incomparable compared with the complete facilities provided for the private schools. Whereas one of the sad reality also of this of the pandemic is with the implementation of the online class. We have this great disparity of access to education because those who belong to the poor sector, to the marginalized, diba, it is a difficult or struggle on their part to continue with their edu with their education because you need to connect to the internet. Whereas those students that were able to connect with the internet, those who belong to the middle class, for example, or upper 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 class of our society, were able to continue with their education. This is the sad reality where in inequality exists in our society, and this is being highlighted or being heightened with the ongoing health crisis that we have right now. We have, for example, the health inequalities. Well, in those who have less in life, the marginalized sector, they have this less opportunity for health services and health sec health services or healthcare services compared with those in the upper class, those who have the power, the income, and the wealth. So basically, this is the main gist or main concept of the conflict theory of Karl Marx. Another philosopher who shed light on the concept of on the con, on the theory of Marxism or the conflict theory is Max Weber. Max Weber added that aside from economic inequalities, there were also inequalities of social structure and political power that caused struggle. Weber also noted that different groups were treated differently based on race 
based on gender and based on educational attainment. And this is somehow the problem that we that exists in different society, wherein we have this disparity or we have this inequality in terms of opportunity when it comes to gender. Diba? Some societies, they still don't implement or they don't have those inclusive uh, policy okay, for the for uh, in terms of the gender. Still, uh, some society fail to promote equal rights or equal treatment between the male and the female. So goes in terms of so of of the online class. Diba? Those who belong to the marginalized sector, it's always been a difficult and a, 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 a difficult and a struggle on their part to continue with their education because of course of the poverty and financial standing that they're experiencing. And the last sociological perspective is what we call as symbolic interactionism. Symbolic interactionism study the human relationships of individuals within a society or human interaction in which people make sense of their social words or communication through exchange of language, symbols, and its meaning. George Herbert Mead is considered as the founding father of symbolic interactionism. While his student Herbert Bloomer introduced the term symbolic interactionism with the following basic premises. The first one is that human beings communicate based on the meanings they ascribe to things. Second, the attribute meaning of things come from our interactions with others and society. And lastly, the meanings of things are interpreted through a process used by the individual in treating the things he or she experiences. Remember, for symbolic interactionism, the main idea here is that we put symbols based on how we interact, based on how we communicate with other people. So again, we have three perspectives when it comes to society. We have the structural functionalism, conflict theory, and we have the symbolic interactionism. Let's now proceed to the second part of our topic, and this is social group. Groups are formed on a, as an assemblage of people who often interact with each other on the basis of a common outlook concerning behavior and a sense of common identity. A social group may consist of two or more individuals who do, who do things together with a common goal and interest. Example of groups are family, relatives, couples, couples friends, churchmate, schoolmate, co-workers, neighborhood, organization, teammate, clubs, and so many more. Now, social aggregates are simple collection of people who happen to be together in a particular place but do not significantly interact or identify with one another. <laughs> Example of social aggregates are the passengers inside the bus, inside the jeepney, or even an LRT. They just happen on a, they just happen to be on the same place, but they don't have interaction with one another. When we say social categories, these are people who share a common characteristics such as gender or occupation, but do not necessarily interact or identify with one another. Example, boys of senior high school or Manila senior high school teachers, they do have the commonality but they don't interact necessarily or they don't identify with one another. The only thing that they have common is that all of them are considered boys of senior high or that they are all teacher, senior high school teachers in the city of Manila. Now, group are collection of individuals who have regular contact and frequent interaction and common feeling of belongingness who work together to achieve a common set of goals. A social group is a collection of people who regularly interact with one another on the basis of shared expectations concerning behavior and who share a sense of common identity. Now, we have here what we call as the primary group. Primary group typically are a small group whose members share close, personal, and enduring relationships. Members of primary groups feel a strong personal identity with the group. Best example of a primary group is our, or is our family. 
or even your close friend or what you call as your best friend or your BFF, best friend forever. This core group or this people is what we call as our primary group. The next is the secondary group. Secondary group can be small or large. The common interests bind the members together more than their relationship. Usually, uh, the nature of relationship for secondary group is considered short term. This group can be found typically at work or even at school. So, say for example, your classmates, your group meets on your PETA or performance task. They can be considered as your secondary group or even your office mates or colleagues or co-workers, they are considered to be your secondary group. Next is the in-group. In-group are social groups to which an individual feels he or she belongs. One feels loyalty and respect for these groups. For example, fraternity, sports team, club, Outgroup are social groups that an individual does not identify with. One feels antagonism and contempt for these groups. For example, is the sports team opponent. Remember, for the concept of in-group and out-group, we have the concept of us and them. The concept of us refers to the in-group, while the concept of them refers to the out group. So, say for example, you're going to compete on a contest, say for example, a quiz B, and you represent your school. So, your team is the end group, while those uh, schools that you're going to compete, they are considered as the out group. Next is the reference group. Reference group are group to which we compare ourselves. Reference groups serve as an element or component that individuals use as a standard towards the achievement of a desired behavior in making judgment about the quality of life or things. It is not necessary that we become a member of a reference group. This can be a person's favorite fashion style, artist, pop idols, sports team, mentor, or even a well-known personality that we admire and we want to emulate. For example, this uh, this particular uh, fan of the of the BTS boy band in Korea called as the Army, they are considered as a reference group. Or even, for example, you idolize, for example, the Gilas Filipinas basketball team. This can be considered as your reference group. Lastly, we have the network. Networks are created because of the need to establish connection for some reasons like personal, economic, religious, or political interest. These are collective individuals functioning on similar undertaking unnecessarily known to one another. A network is a group that includes <coughs> individuals who come into casual connection but who do not have enough sense of belongingness. Other intellectuals assert that, that networks are unstratified, unstructured, and free of value organizations. Example of this are Facebook, our social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and other social networking sites. Example of which of networks, say for example, you're a member of Youth for Lenny, or for example, you're a supporter, for example, or member of the Facebook group of Batang Maynila by Yorme Isko Moreno. Or you can be, for example, member of different group chat, of different groups on your social media account. That includes or encompasses network. Even the, the vlogs, for example, of some celebrity you follow on on, on Twitter, Instagram, or even on YouTube or TikTok are example of what we call as network. Network becomes more popular with the rise of the social media phenomenon that we have right now. Now, what are the functions of social groups? For primary group, it plays a vital part in the socialization process. Primary group forms the social nature and ideals of individuals, especially in shaping the culture and personality where a person learns social norms, beliefs, morals, and values. 
while the secondary group tend to relate to others only in specific roles and for practical reasons. This group helps in fulfilling different types of human needs and bring about social awareness and social change. This group helps fulfill different interests in different fields like sports, dance, music, and others. So for primary group, the main function is for us uh, is to the main function is for socialization, di ba? We invite norms, our values, our personality. While for secondary group, it aims to fulfill our role in different field of interest or in different field, for example, of roles that we need to portray. So say, for example, di ba, being a member, for example, of PAPETA, di ba, you need to perform whatever role or task given unto you. For in-group and out-group, an in-group may form within our secondary group such as workmates, groupmates, or assembly, which functions as a group of people who can connect with each other because of their sense of identity and belongingness, while out-group functions as a competitor or rival group that an individual is opposed to. Reference group provides a standard of measurement. This group has a strong impact on how a person thinks and acts as it may serve as guide to a member's behavior and social norms. And lastly, social networks are influential in a wide range of online platforms used for building social relationships with other people including sharing of political opinions, likes and dislikes and can even show trending societal issues or personality but always remember that we should be prudent on the use of social media think before we click before we end with our discussion let's have first an, a, a short assessment of what we have learned and discussed from today's topic we have here five item short assessment let's have question number one it views the society consisting of institutions which perform specific purpose or function. A. Conflict theory. B. Symbolic interactionism. Letter C. Structural functionalism. The correct answer is structural functionalism. Let's have item number two. It views society as an arena for competition because of limited resources and an equal social structure between the rich and the poor. Is it A, conflict theory? B, symbolic, interaction, symbolic interactionism or letter C, structural functionalism. The correct answer for number two is conflict theory. I hope that you were able to get the correct answer. Next is item number three. It is a small group whose members share close, personal, and enduring relationships. Is it primary group? secondary group, or core group. The correct answer, of course, is letter A, primary group. Let's have item number four. Gilas Pilipinas represented the Philippines in the Southeast Asian Games Basketball Tournament. They competed against other basketball teams from Southeast Asian countries. Their opponent teams are considered letter A, in-group, letter B, out-group, or letter C, reference group. The correct answer for number four is letter B. They are considered as out-group. And last for item number five, our last item. Eilish is a nurse in a public hospital. During her free time or vacant time, she joins her colleagues in the hospital canteen to eat lunch with them. 
In what social group do her colleagues belong? A. Primary group B. Secondary group or letter C. Network And the correct answer for number 5 is secondary group. I hope that you were able to get the correct answer. That ends our discussion for today. I hope that you learned something from today's topic for UCSP. If you find this particular video lesson interesting and you, you learn something from this uh, video lesson, please support by subscribing this channel. I am Sir Edward Noda and see you again for our next topic or for our next episode with UCSP class with Sir Edward. Please stay safe and have a good day.